Today just came to have uh, my car audio system upgraded. I hope uh, you're going to get convinced as I was convinced. So uh, let's do this. Guys, you want to upgrade your car audio system? You're wondering where you're going to upgrade this car audio system? Who is going to upgrade your car audio system? And uh, what kind of product or speaker brand you're going to use? Then join me today. I'm going to show you a uh, first-hand experience of what I've done to my vehicle. Uh, my car came with around 100 watts of speakers. It's a Nissan Tiana. Good, good systems, good speakers. But today I fitted it with a 400 watts subwoofer speaker and a seat. I'm just going to show you the effect, the bass, uh, the output, the vibration that is coming from the speaker and why you actually need to upgrade. Uh, before, if you notice, uh, the speakers are quite small, uh, especially for low, low, low class vehicles, especially uh, the Toyotas, they come with the 20 watt speakers. But today, I'm sure you're going to be convinced to do a 400 watts upgrade of the audio system. Uh, greetings, guys. Uh, my name is Gideon Mwangi. I'm um, the owner of Simuka Amplified and uh, today we just want to have a general discussion about car audio and the car audio in Kenya so and the reasons why you should consider doing uh, an upgrade to your vehicle from the stock speakers, head units etc. So um, we basically deal with car audio accessories and equipment such as the ones displayed here, head units, subwoofers, tweeters, speakers so basically what the manufacturer does is that they put the bare minimum to just give you to just give you your your vehicle the output so that's that's what they do they just give you the bare minimum but you find there are certain elements of music that they compromise in the bare minimum effect that they are trying to put out there for example in sound we have treble we have mids and we have bass so um, this car audio equipment, aftermarket car audio equipment, help you to realize these elements of music much better than stock factory speakers or head units. So um, as an example, I have here uh, Pioneer 400DA. This is an underseat subwoofer. This uh, is something for the new market. Uh, we say people who, who value their space as it is right now with people's businesses, families and stuff. So this, this for example, this is a speaker that adds bass to your vehicle. It gives you the the umpuaf, for lack of a better word, effect of the vehicle. So if you're looking for a subwoofer, don't want to put something big behind the boot. This is one of the solutions that that's out there. So now this is the the notion that car audio is about filling up space in the boot, uh, having something extra and all that. That has changed. The market has developed, and we we have such solutions. For example, um, in terms of head units, I would say that uh, we usually advocate for a mere uh, bare minimum of a of an of a Bluetooth stereo. So, for example, this is this is the single DIN Bluetooth uh, head unit that you would find. Uh, basically, we we know the ones that were there in the Matatus, but with the new emergence we have, such as this one. This one is a makeless unit with USB and Bluetooth. So this helps you now um, have that, that versatility in your audio playback. If you connect your phone, you're able to, to, to play back music. And especially right now, it's, it's, it's a very good time because we have apps like Spotify, Apple Music that have launched in Kenya and you can be able to now stream music, uh, podcasts, audiobooks and all those stuff. Also, I'd like to talk about uh, another technology from this uh, Sony XAV5500. So this one now has something that um, was developed by Google and iPhone, okay, not iPhone but Apple, sorry, uh, which, which now enables you to keep your eyes on the road. The technology behind it is called uh, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. So these technologies help you to connect your phone to the screen. So when you're driving, whether it's message notification, whether it's calls, you can do hands-free calling, you can do message, you can receive message notifications, you can even reply while you're still driving through assistants like Google Assistant or Siri. 
So these technologies are out there, they are available here in the market in Kenya and uh, we just want to create an awareness so that we, 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 we enlighten that it's not about, car audio is not just about kelele, it's also about functionality that the technology has brought in in this time and age. Okay, so this this is an unboxing of uh, one of the head units, the head units I've spoken about, the Sony XAV5500. You have your paper for the manual, you have the remote that helps you um, control the head unit. And then when you open it, we have the actual head unit. You can see this is actually a new age head unit. It's a single DIN chassis because we don't need a CD player in this time and age, so the extra space that would have been for the CD player has been uh, eliminated. And the screen for this particular one is capacitive, just like your smartphone. Uh, it's very responsive and very clear. So apart from that, we have now the, the wiring harness, the main power cable. And then uh, for this particular head unit, we have uh, two USB adapters. One for your smartphone for connecting the Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, and the other you can use it for your USB extension. Uh, we have the, uh, this is what we call the steering wheel control adapter. So if your vehicle has uh, steering wheel controls, uh, especially Japanese models, you can be able to retain them with these aftermarket head units. Also, functions like reverse camera, it can also be catered for. It has a reverse camera input at the back of the radio. So you can be able also to retain your, your backup camera. We also have the external microphone. So this we uh, put it near the driver's side for your voice calls and uh, commands to be able to capture your voice better and clearer. So that, that this now is a, is a head unit. This is, for this one in particular, this is Sony XAV AX, AX5500 with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Okay. On this other side, we have now uh, a model uh, under seat subwoofer. This is this is by Pioneer, called Pioneer TSWX 400DA. It's a compact subwoofer with an inbuilt amplifier, and the design is down firing, whereby the speaker on this particular under seat is uh, is located on the lower side, so that when you mount it, uh, it uses the depth, of, it uses the floor as a as a buzz enhancer. So um, at the bottom here, we have the the inputs, we have your power input. We also have an external um, remote. This now functions as an equalizer. As mentioned, the, the under seat subwoofer has an amplifier, so you don't need to connect an, another a separate amplifier to drive this speaker. It already comes inbuilt. And then uh, I usually put it that the external remote that I'm holding uh, acts like the equalizer, whereby you don't need now the external knob again for for adjusting. You can just use it using the factory remote controller. You can also do the settings down here so once it's mounted it's ready to go. And uh, this under seat subwoofer you do not need to put an aftermarket head unit. If you feel your head unit is uh, sufficient and you're just lacking the base element, you can use this under seat as an, as an enhancer to the buzz. So you don't need to upgrade your factory head unit for it to for it to be compatible. You can use your factory head unit and uh, we just upgrade the, the sound. So <coughs> the, power, the power harness is right here. It's very minimalistic actually. It has only three components. You have power, ground and accessory. Only three wires that uh, go, go towards the, go from the, from the subwoofer to the head, head unit. We also have your RCA units. These are for the speakers. So it's very minimalistic for someone who's very cautious about wiring, functionality, wiring, functionality of the car, any hazards in wiring. We, we highly recommend these units, these under seat subwoofers, as they are very minimalistic. They are non-intrusive, they are very simple to install, and also if you change cars, they are also very simple to remove. Because the wiring actually, the wiring was and 95% is already pro is already provided by the manufacturer. On display here we have first of all this is this is a typical factory head unit. The Japanese uh, this is a Japanese head unit uh, with the language uh, not being in English and stuff. So these are some of the things that I was mentioning earlier that uh, some of these venues that come with the car can also be cumbersome, hence the need of uh, replacing 
and apart from the head unit, we can now mention well, Gideon. Yes. Uh, I know our viewers out there. There are a number of couple uh, of people who own cars, mm -hmm. and they would probably ask you why will they change their factory or their stock speakers. Okay. So probably you're going to explain to us about the head unit, okay. which is the radio or the screen. Mm -hmm. So with you, I can see you have a couple of speakers. Yes. Uh, my question would be, so where do we start? So I'm a car owner, okay. I want to change my head unit, or I actually don't have a reason, so why would I change my speakers? Okay, so uh, in the middle here we have your typical factory uh, speaker. Mm -hmm. This is one that was removed from a vehicle as a demonstration. Okay. As you can see, the build material, uh, to be honest, is quite cheap. Mm -hmm. uh, the magnet used is quite small. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is why you find sometimes uh, this, these speakers are not able to handle high volume. You find when you play music on high volume, no. distortion now comes. Okay. Ah, okay. So this is the magnet? That's the magnet. Interesting. Yes. And uh, yet we still want the base. Yes, we still want the base. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Quite light. It's quite light. Okay, so with me, I can say I have the Kenwood, I have the Sony. Yes. So, so. as a first time person, either the first time car owner or the first time I'm changing my unit. Okay. Um, which speaker should I go with, or what makes the difference? So, uh, first thing we'll do is assess your vehicle. There are vehicles that come with factory amplifiers, <laughs> okay. and there are vehicles that are run directly by the head unit. So if your car is run directly by the head unit, there is no there is no amp in place. Uh, okay. You might not require um, a heavy speaker like this Kenwood. And just for visual comparison, you can see uh, just by the look of it, the magnet here is massive as compared to the Sony. And, and this is the factory. <laughs> <laughs> and yet you want the base. And yet you want the base. So yeah. if you if your car is run by a factory head unit, okay. uh, for example, now the Sony would be sufficient for you because you. The, okay, the Sony, the power of the Sony is mini. It's let me, let me say it's, it's above the factory speaker. Okay. Uh, even the rating at the back here, this is 45 watts uh, mm -hmm. RMS power peak 270. Yeah. Okay. And uh, our speaker here, I can see it's 20 watts max. Okay. Mm. Interesting. Well, viewers, this is your speaker. That's what it comes from. It comes with from Japan. So. From Japan. You better reconsider, man. Yes. Uh, so I can see uh, just a question. Uh, from this, uh, this is the Kenwood. Yes, uh, I can see it's written 450 watts yes. and uh, RMS of 150. So just uh, in, a, in, a, in a layman's language, what is that? So, because uh, from what I'm seeing from the X, from the Sony Explode, it's uh, RMS of 45 watts, peak power of 270. That's quite a big variant. Yes, so. What does that uh, imply or what's the necessity of the wattage? So uh, the max power handling of the, usually that's the one you find uh, usually plastered on the on the boxes uh, front at the front that's the maximum power handling ah. so uh, it means the maximum power the, the speaker can handle ah, okay. and then we have a remiss, that's a continuous power in fact that's what we usually like using as a basis of uh, judging a speaker the ah. continuous power handling wow. because mm -hmm. the maximum may just be a market gimmick mm -hmm. that doesn't give you the real picture mm -hmm. but the RMS gives you so uh, in comparison of the Sony and the Kenwood mm -hmm. you find that uh, if you put if you put the Kenwood, okay, if you put the Sony mm -hmm. in a direct factory stereo mm -hmm. without any arm, mm -hmm. it will run quite well, okay. without distortion and everything. Mm -hmm. However, if you put the same Kenwood on a factory, mm -hmm. uh, yet it will also run quite well. Okay. However, its true potential won't be realized, uh, like, because yes, okay. it's because it's, it still can handle more. That's no, why okay. I would, uh, would recommend you to put this in a factory, in, a, in an arm setup, mm -hmm. either an aftermarket amplifier or if your vehicle is being run by a factory amp. Mm, so okay. that, that determines, it's a potential, a potential speaker. However, also uh, as, a, as something uh, for future, okay. we can, can advise you to put the Kenwood. Mm -hmm. uh, if in case in the future you'd like to put an aftermarket amplifier, mm -hmm. if you don't have one instead, that would save you the cost of uh, needing to update to get the speaker, the speaker again. again. Ah, yes. okay. Yeah. Okay. So okay. that is not to say that the direct factory radio cannot run this Kenwood. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's just that if it's, the it's power, it's power mm. uh, the potential is realized more when you connect 
an external amplifier. Ah, yes, good, good. Yes. So uh, with me, uh, I can see there's a rock fort. Yes. So uh, quite frankly, out there I've heard about the rock fort. Yes. I've always wanted to own a vehicle with a rock fort or a mm -hmm. and Sony and whatnot. Yes. So what differentiates this from Kenwood and Sony? Well, uh, I would say is um, the origin of Rockford is the United States. It's, a, it's an American brand. So, uh, as you all know, if you associate anything that's American, mm -hmm. uh, there is there is the quality aspect. There's the quality ah, aspect. Okay. Okay. That 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 is not to say that um, the the pioneers and Sony's are not quality. For example, here we have uh, one XB sixteen fifty one. Okay. This is also this is manufactured by Sony. Mm -hmm. It's a five way uh quadrio speaker and mm. um, with the with so you can see you the, the quality i wouldn't say that the quality isn't at, at par at par yeah, yeah. so it, the, the <coughs> difference between these the sony empire and the rockford would be the area of origin so mm -hmm. the rockford is an american brand american. that's why and the haman kadon you know those, those these are big names eh? mm, no, okay. and we we associate we, we've grown with sony and pioneer pioneer so that's why they may seem uh Bit too familiar as compared to Rockford Force Gate or here, Herman Cardone or JBL. Mm -hmm. Yes, so ah. we would all of them would recommend them. Mm -hmm. uh, we have no, uh, we have no, uh, we have no lineage, lineage towards any brand. Mm -hmm. It's it's the quality that gives whatever. If they produce a quality speaker, mm -hmm. we'll we'll recommend a quality speaker to our customer. Ah, so okay. that's how we usually uh, that's how we usually advise our clients, and that's how we usually operate. Ah, okay. okay. Yes. Maybe the question, uh, because I know everyone wants a good speaker, okay. but we are all afraid uh, about uh, the wiring, the cabling. Okay. Because uh, we have seen a couple of cars on the street, on the highway, they just burning. Okay. And uh, when you try to investigate, you find the, the wiring had a problem, okay. or somebody had messed up with the lights, or added some lights and whatnot. So, what kind of a guarantee or reassurance uh, would you give us somebody, like a first-time person who wants to uh, add speakers into the vehicle? And uh, do you have a sample of kind of cables that you normally use? Okay, so um, we, what we do, number one, we take the necessary precautions when doing, doing the installation. Uh, we don't need to tamper where we do not need to tamper. That is usually rule number one. Don't touch anything that's not supposed to be touched. Yeah. So, for example, when you're installing a door speaker, uh, all the cabling is there. Once you remove the door panel, you just find the positive and the negative terminal. Yeah. So you just uh, strip those wires, okay. create a new connection, mm -hmm. and fit the fit the aftermarket speakers. Mm -hmm. So there, uh, the connection was already set in place. Uh, okay. okay. When, when but do you insulate the place that you chip? Yes, yes, yes. We leave okay. no naked wires. Okay. We ensure all all ends are locked. Uh, and then we also ensure that, uh, as mentioned, no wire is exposed anyway to, yeah. to ensure that the proper safety measures are adhered to. Ah, yes, 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 good, good. Yes, yes. Do you have a sample of cables that you may want to show our viewers uh, or somebody who wants to? Uh, because somebody will ask, yes, you found uh, on the vehicle speakers or the, whatever you found the positive and the negative, but what about behind the head unit? How do you connect it to the, the factory radio? To the factory radio? Yeah. Okay, so um, f some of them, the head units. Okay, for example, if you're to do a head unit swap, then it comes its own, it comes its own connector, and uh, the connection uh, having done this uh, over the years and uh, over time, you, you can be able to, to know which wire is which. So, oh, okay. so you, it's not a matter of guesswork. Yes, okay. it's, it's, it's something that you know. This, this is for the left speaker. This is for the right speaker. Yeah, speaker. So every connection is uh, is aligned to the new head units. Mm. Yeah, and uh, okay. and even at the back, if there is anything that we do not need, mm -hmm. as mentioned, do not need to, to touch. Mm -hmm. Just leave it. You do you do whatever is necessary. You work with whatever is necessary. It's necessary. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Good. Good. Um, maybe just. Uh, the last question, uh, this is to our viewers, I'd like you to talk, talk to the customers, talk to the guys who own cars, talk to the people who want to uh, have that quality music, why should they do it and why should they do it at Simo Camp? Okay, here. So, uh, guys, uh, you know, at Simo Amplified, we, we take our time to give you a number of options. Uh, we, we advise based on your car first. Well, most, well, most one of the questions that we ask is uh, what is your vehicle model, so that we can advise accordingly. And uh, if it's you know, if you are not able to, we, we 
we usually also come out and tell you this one is not possible, this one is possible. Yeah. And then uh, one thing I can guarantee you is that your car audio is your only companion in the vehicle. So to be there is no one else who's there with you when you're driving. So imagine going to a long distance and you have a very um, uh, an unfunctional car with you or a very boring system. A boring, yeah. It's it's even it's even a it's even a it's very very it's a precaution because it's very hazardous because yeah. you can fall asleep on the yeah. steering, True. Uh, you can lose concentration. Yeah. But if you have good music, you have good entertainment, you can find yourself being more alert, mm. and the drive will be even uh, less uh, tedious. You you will enjoy the drive. So mm. having a good system. Uh, is not only about the sound, there is also other elements that people overlook of which uh, are the ones that I've just mentioned. Mm, so okay, okay. here at Simuka Amplified we, we offer, we offer uh, our products are all, all have warranty. Mm -hmm. For the warranty process we take care of it ourselves. No, okay. So we story, we follow it up for you no, okay. uh, with the service centre. If it's, if, it's, if it's supposed to be repaired, it will be repaired and then give it back to you. If it's supposed to be replaced, you'll get a, a new unit. Okay. Yes. Okay. Kindly follow me, I'm going to share with you and uh, help. I hope you're going to be convinced. So this is my car. If you're wondering about this space, this is a Nissan Tiana, quite low. Uh, the subwoofer, actually most of you might not even notice. But uh, yes, the subwoofer is here, it doesn't actually eat on the space. There is the sub, this is my mat. And the space is quite safe, uh, and the base is there. So uh, if you're still having thoughts about uh, the space and whether you should actually add the audio, well, think twice about that. So let's listen to the music. Our viewers, I think I leave this to you. It's a decision you'll have to make. <laughs> Whether you want this or you want this. Yeah, so the decision is yours. This is the magnet for your car. This is the unit, unfortunately. And this is the the in thing. So make a decision. Yes. Okay, see you next time. Remember to subscribe. Thanks a lot. Uh, here with Gigi from uh, Simuka. Uh, see you next time. Same place, doing something different. Thanks a lot and uh, have a nice one. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Kitty. Most welcome.